Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet is brought to you by Chesterfield. Made by Liggett and Myers. First major tobacco company to give you a complete line of quality cigarettes. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. An organized gang of thieves is working in your city. Their method of operation is clever and fast. There's no lead to their identity. Your job? Stop them. To sell a product, you have to make it good and keep it good. What do the latest reports show about Chesterfield? Well, our research laboratory has compared it with the leading cigarettes in the country. Chesterfield is highest in quality, low in nicotine. Another good reason why thousands of people are changing to Chesterfield every day. Smoke America's most popular two-way cigarette. Regular or king size, you'll find Chesterfield really mild, really satisfying. Best for you. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, May 7th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. We were on our way out from the office, and it was 9.46 a.m. when we got to the corner of Beverly Boulevard and Fountain Streets, the Brighton Arms Apartments. 12A, isn't it? Yeah. Where is it? Want to try it again? Yeah. Just a minute. Yeah? Miss Anderson? Yeah, that's right. Police officers. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Oh, yeah. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Sit down. I'll put some coffee on. All right. That's the only way to do it, Joe. What? Coffee grinder, hear it? Well, that's what it is, huh? Yeah. You buy the coffee beans and you grind them up because you need the coffee real fresh. I'm going to get Faye one. I'm great gadgets. Yeah, guess so. You never tasted coffee that fresh, Joe. Whole different flavor. Well, if you say so. Yeah. Wait till I get Faye one. You'll be asked over for the first pot of coffee. That's nice. You got a match? Yes, ma'am. Here. It's about the burglary, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. A couple of questions we'd like to ask. Go ahead. We've got the report you gave the officers last night. Now, this list of stolen property, I wonder if you'd look at it and see if it's right. Here you are. Mm, diamond watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The mink. Yeah, that's it. It's the mink that's important. Took me three years working to get that. Sure hope you bring it back. Yes, ma'am. We'll try. Have you got any ideas as to what time the theft might have occurred? Well, near as I can figure, it must have been around midnight. Why do you say that? Well, I got home from work about 11.30. I'm a hostess in a restaurant downtown. Mm-hmm. Go on, please. Got home. The coat was still here. I hardly ever come into the house without checking on it. You know, it's the only real thing of value I got. Yes, ma'am. Well, there it was, hanging in the closet. I went out to have a cup of coffee and pick up the papers before I went to bed. Whoever took it must have been waiting outside. He saw me leave and then came in. Why do you say he? Hmm? Well, you said he must have been waiting. Oh, I didn't mean anything special. You know, just a word. I see. Did you see anybody in the vicinity when you left the house? No. Not that I can tell about now. The corner's a pretty busy place, Sergeant. Lots of people around there. A couple of restaurants. Always a lot of people around. I wonder if we could see how they got in, please. Yeah, right back here. Here, you see, they cut the screen on the porch door and then just reached in and opened it. Mm Mm-hmm. Top half of the door. You had it like this, did you? Yeah, you see, you just flip these two little things and the glass part of the door comes out. Always take it out on warm nights. Anything else in the apartment disturbed? Not that I could tell. Seems that they just went into the bedroom and took the coat. That and the watch and the other stuff, but it's the coat that's important. Yes, I understand. I mean, coat means something special to a girl. I told you it took me three years of saving before I could buy it. It's a long time to do without things, Sergeant. An awful long time. Yes, ma'am. 
I only had the coat three days, and this happens. Just three days. Hardly even had a chance to wear it. Is the coat insured? I think so. Ma'am? Well, I just got it. I think it's insured. I have to check with a salesman. I, I told him I wanted the coat covered. Boy, I just hope it's in effect. Beautiful coat. Just beautiful. Silver blue. Cost me almost $4,000. Come right down to it. That's about $1,000 a day. We have the serial number here for the watch. Now, is there any way you could identify the coat for us? Certainly. All I have to do is look at it. I can tell. Well, yes, ma'am. But is there any mark, any type of label that would help us in identifying? Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Well, there's a store label. You could tell by that. Oh, that's probably one of the first things the thieves will take off. Well, I suppose so. Well, there's my initials. They can't get those out. Ma'am? I got my initials on some of the pelts. Had it done when I got the coat. Had it marked right on the skins under the lining. My initials, J.A. You could be able to tell from that. Could you draw the initials for us? Yeah. Wait a minute. I'll get a piece of paper. Right here, Miss Anderson. You can use this. Oh, oh, thanks. Here's pencil. Okay. Well, you see, it's sort of like this. J.A. Like that. Mm -hmm. Would you draw the coat and show us where the initials are? Sure. You see, here's the sleeves. Then the body part comes down like this. Mm -hmm. The hem's here, and the initials are right there. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Anderson, this is exactly how the initials are... Oh, there goes a coffee. Can, can I give you a cup? No, no thanks, no. No, thanks, ma'am. Well, excuse me a minute, huh? Yes, ma'am. Do you really think you're going to get it back? Well, we're going to try. Did the men who were here last night get any clues? Beg your pardon? The men who were here last night, did they find anything that had helped? Not a great deal, no, ma'am. Well, I sure hope they find my coat. I just hate to think about it. What's that, ma'am? All that time. Three years working to save for a coat. Then just to have it three days. You know how the models in the magazines kind of drag a mink coat along the ground? You know, sort of over their shoulders? Yes, ma'am, I guess so. Well, I just had it three days, you know. Yeah. I didn't even learn how to do that. <laughs> Reports of similar burglaries had been coming into the office for the past six weeks. In each one, the method of operation was similar enough to let us know that we were dealing with the same thieves. All of the homes that were prowled were residences. The owners of the houses were always absent. Entrance to the places was made through a rear window. In those cases where the window was open, the screen was cut. Where the window was locked, the pane of glass was broken, and the entrance made that way. The classification of goods stolen was also the same in all of the burglaries. Pieces of jewelry, whatever money was found, and fur coats. The only room prowled was the one where the fur coats were kept. None of the valuables in the rest of the house would be touched. Bulletins had been gotten out to all of the pawn shops in the area on the stolen pieces, but there'd been no replies. The M.O. had been checked by the staff's office, and the possibles that they came up with were checked out. We failed to come up with a suspect. The investigation of the crime lab on the scene had produced no tangible evidence. Frank and I had gone over the burglary reports time and time again, trying to find something that would tie the thefts together. None of the victims were acquainted with each other. They all lived in different parts of the city. The coats were bought from different retailers. And yet, within a week of the time the coat was purchased, it would be stolen. Friends of the victims were checked. In most instances, we found that they didn't even know the victim had been in possession of the article stolen. On the night of May 6th, another burglary was reported. Among the stolen articles were a mink stole and a full-length natural mink coat. The coat had been purchased only three days before the theft. The victim had worn it in public only twice. After going over the physical evidence at the scene and talking with the woman, we were no further than we had been. Saturday, May 11th, Frank and I checked into the office. Another one that doesn't go any place. Yeah, you want to get the reports out? Yeah. You know, Joe, there's got to be something to tie them all together, something in common. Well, if we come up with that, maybe we got the answer. You see the bunch down by Chief Brown's office when we came in? Yeah. I recognize one of them. Yeah, who? Insurance man. They'll most likely be down here when they get through talking to Chief Brown. What's the figure the thefts have cost them? A little under $47,000. Well, you stand that kind of loss, you'd do some yelling, too, wouldn't you? I suppose. Funny none of the stuff's turned up. Well, it isn't doing them any good unless they sell it. I get it. Burglary Friday. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. What's your name? What? Oh, where are you now? Mm-hmm. All right. No, we'll be right over. Right. Well, maybe we got one. Yeah? A woman says she wants to talk to us about a stolen fur coat. <laughs> The woman gave the name of Wilda Chandler. She said that she had some information for us and asked us to meet her in a bar at the corner of St. Andrew's Place and Las Palmas Avenue. It took us 23 minutes to get there. See her? No, we'd better ask the bartender. Yeah. Yeah? Is there a Miss Chandler here? Chandler? That's right. She just called. Said to meet her here. 
Might be her in the back booth. Didn't give no name. Black booth. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. If it's her or your friend, will you do me a favor? What's that? Try to get her out of here. What do you mean? Get her out of here. All she's been doing is sitting back there playing that song. Playing the song, ordering doubles. We ain't got a girl in here this time of the morning. I gotta carry the orders back to her. Got a lot of other stuff to do. All right, we'll see about it. Well, if you can't get her out, at least talk her into sitting up here at the bar. It says I don't have to walk, huh? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Miss Chandler? Sit right down, boy. Been expecting you. Right. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. You just bet you. Glad to meet both of you. Talked to you on the phone, didn't I? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'll never forget a name. How about a drink for you two boys? No, oh, ma'am, thank you. you. Should have a couple. Seems to make everything a lot better. I may have several more. You said something about some information on some stolen fur coats, that right? Yeah, and I got it. Old Max, he's gonna be sorry. Old Max? Hear that on the jukebox? Melancholy mood. Hear it? Yes, ma'am. Our song. Is that right? You just betcha. Old Max, our song. Partner that goes... Gone is every joy and inspiration. Tears are all I have to show. No consolation. So old Max left me. Tears in his fur coat. Uh-huh. Who's Max? You fellas sure you don't want to drink? No, ma'am. No, Max. Just the tears in the coat. See? This is it. What do you think of it? It's very pretty. That's a lie. It's a lousy coat and you know it. You want to tell us about the stolen coat, please? Yeah, I've been working for Max almost two months and I just found out. You think that's pretty dumb, huh? Well, maybe if you'd tell us about it. Two months. Matter of fact, I just got the message last night, Friday, May 10th, 1.22 a.m., if you want to be exact. That's when I got the message about old Max. Now, look, miss, you called us and said that you had some information on some coats, and I wonder if you'd be kind enough to tell us about oh, it. Oh, just bet you. Would you put this in the jukebox for me? Play number B7, huh? Yes, ma'am. B7, huh? Yeah, melancholy mood. Oh, Max and my song. You know what? These are no good. A real no good. This Max, has he got something to do with the burglaries? You just betcha. Old slick Max, he's a pistol. Yeah. Say, how about a drink? No, thank you. I didn't mean for you, for me. Suppose you tell us about Max and the furs, would you please? If that's the way you want it. Max is a thief. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you know him? I don't know. A thief. Worked for him two months, even thinking about marrying him. All the time, he's a thief. What's Max's last name? Barrett. Thanks for playing the song. It's real nice. That's B7. What about this Max? Tell me how I was going to wear mink, and this is what I end up with. Now, look, Miss Chandler, if you have some information for us, we want to hear it. But we haven't got time to sit here and keep you company. You think it's all a gag, huh? You just think I'm lonely, so I called you. That's what you think, isn't it? Why don't you tell us? Well, it isn't a gag. I can tell you all about the coats, all about them. Yes, ma'am, that's why we're here. Would you go ahead? Well, I'm a hat check girl in a restaurant out in the country. It's a good racket. Got the job about three months ago. Doing real well at it. Then I meet this Max two months ago. Old Max walks in. Yes, ma'am. Gives me the big pitch. How he thinks I'm so pretty, all that kind of stuff, you know? Go ahead. Well, he really piles it on. How he's got a big deal cooking, and as soon as it comes through, him and me is going to get married. Tells me that while he's waiting for the deal to gel, he's selling insurance. Old Max selling insurance. Pretty funny, huh? Mm. Well, he tells me that the hardest thing about selling insurance is the contacts. You know, getting to meet the people who need it. Contacts. Yeah. And that's where I come in. You see, old Max, he doesn't sell insurance on people, not like on their lives. He doesn't sell that kind. Mm -hmm. He sells what they call uh, personal property insurance on things like rings and coats, stuff like that. You with me? Yes, ma'am, so far. Go ahead. Well, he tells me that if I'll help him with his contacts, he'll cut me in on his percentage. Says all I have to do is tell him when some woman comes in with a new coat. Her name and address, and he'll go see her and make the sale. Gets me simple. All I gotta do is get the names and addresses. Did you do it? Sure. How dumb can you get? I gave him the names and addresses. I knew there was anything wrong. Can you tell us what names you gave him? I got every one of them. Got them at home. You can have them. Well, when did you find out he wasn't an insurance salesman? Last night, 1.22 a.m., I wasn't feeling so good, so I took off from work. Went by his place. Old Max is just coming in. Got the car parked out by his garage. The back seat is loaded with fur coats, all kind of other stuff. Watches, jewelry. That's when I knew he was a no good. Oh, Max, a pistol, a real no good. Yes, ma'am. What happened? Well, I asked him about the stuff, where he got it. Yeah? He told me all about it. 
how he'd been stealing, how all the names I'd been giving him were his sucker list. How as soon as I'd given the information, he'd lift the stuff. All that time. Two months, and I figured he was an insurance salesman. You know what he's doing with the coats? What? Well, is he selling them? Sure. He's got a regular order business. You call up and order a blue mink coat. If you want a platinum stole, just call Max. You'll have it. Is he disposing of it here in L.A.? <laughs> Not old Max. He's too smart for that. Ships the stuff east. Is that right? Didn't I just tell you it was? You just betcha. Max gets an order, and he goes out and he fills it. Then he gets a hold of some young kid and offers him a trip to the east. Maybe Chicago, Detroit, New York. Where were the deliveries supposed to be made? Gives the kid a plane ticket and sends him on the way. The carrier know what he's doing? Oh, no. Max just gives him the suitcase and tells him where to deliver it. How'd you find out about the operation set up? Old Max, he told me. Said that since I found out, he'd have to cut me in. Give me all the scoop. Barrett ever been arrested? I don't know, maybe. You any close friends in town, do you know? I guess. Never saw none of them myself. You want to show us where he lives? Sure. I want to see him get his. After the way he lied, ain't nothing too bad for him. Oh, Max, a pistol. He sell all the stolen goods? What do you mean? Well, do you know where the stolen coats are and the rest of the things? It must be in his apartment. Can't think of any other place it'd be. Gotta be there. Do you know if he's there now? He should be. He don't ever get up before noon. Should be there. I just want to see you get him. Lousiest trick in the world what he did to me. You know what's that? Oh, what time him stealing those coats. Oh, that beautiful mink. Look at this. Yes, ma'am. That's a very pretty coat. I thought so, too. Take a close look. Old Max gave it to me to show he was on the level. Take a good look. Yeah? All that mink, and he gives me rabbit. Before we left the bar, we put in a call to R&I asking if Max Barrett had a police record. The office told us that there was none in our files. We asked that a teletype be sent to George Brereton at the CII office up in Sacramento. We also had the name Wilda Chandler checked. She had no record in Los Angeles. 11.20 11.20 a.m. We got Barrett's address from the Chandler woman, and then we called a radio car. The officers took her to the city hall where she could make a full statement. Frank and I drove over to Barrett's apartment. Wilda Chandler had told us that the suspect drove a late model Pontiac sedan. We found the car parked in the garage in the rear of Barrett's address. A preliminary search of the garage and of the car failed to turn up any evidence of the thefts. 11.46 a.m. Frank and I went up to see Barrett. I'll get it. Mm. Probably still asleep. Uh-huh. Who is it? I'd like to see you. Just a minute. Yeah? You Max Barrett? Yeah, who are you guys? What do you want? Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. Oh, get out Hold of here, sir. <laughs> all right, now come on, on your feet, Barrett. What's this all about, anyway? What are you guys doing breaking in here like this? You want to check the closets, Frank? Right. You got no right to come in here and do this. What are you looking for? I got nothing to hide. You didn't act that way when we came in, did you? How'd I know you were real cops? You read all the time in the papers how guys say they're cops and then break in and rob people. That's what I thought you were. Only cops. We showed you our identification, didn't we? Well, how'd I know it was real? I've never been mixed up with the law before. How'd I know you were really cops? How about it? Place is clean. Sure, it's clean. What'd you expect to find? All right, come on, get dressed. We're taking you downtown. For what? We want to talk to you. Any talking you got to do, do it here. I'm not going any place with you. You just keep believing that, mister, and I get your clothes on. Come on. What are you arresting me for? Suspicion of burglary. Are you serious? Get dressed. Okay, you take me in, book me. But you're going to be in real trouble, cop, because there's one big problem. Yeah? You can't prove it. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. There are good reasons why thousands of people are changing to Chesterfield every day. Why Chesterfield is the largest selling two-way cigarette in America. Why Chesterfield is best for me and best for you. People these days want facts. When you want people to use your product, you have to tell them what effect it has on people who do use it regularly. That's why a doctor has examined for almost two years a large group of Chesterfield smokers. 45% of them have, on the average and smoking Chesterfields for well over 10 years. What is the effect on these people from smoking Chesterfield? No adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses, says the doctor. Consider Chesterfield's record with these smokers, with millions of other smokers throughout America. Another good reason for you to change to Chesterfield. Regular or king size, Chesterfield is best for me, best for you. (laughs) 
12.10 p.m. We called the office and arranged for a stakeout on Barrett's apartment in the event any of his associates contacted him. We asked his landlady about his friends. She told us that as far as she knew, the suspect was an insurance salesman. She said that he told her that because of his type of business, it would be necessary for him to keep late hours and that he didn't want to be disturbed during the day. We searched his apartment and his garage, but we were unable to turn up any of the stolen merchandise. We took him down to the city hall and got off all station radiograms with special attention to the police departments in Chicago, Detroit, and New York, giving them descriptions of the suspect and of the stolen property. We asked that their pawn shop details check the outlets in their cities. 3.15 p.m., we had Barrett brought to the city hall and we talked to him in the squad room. Okay, you made the booboo. Now, how are you going to get out of it? What do you mean? Well, you've had the chance to check my record. You know I'm clean. How are you going to get out of having me sue you? You got a job. Yeah. Where do you work? I'm an insurance salesman. What's the name of your company? What do you want that for? We want to talk to them. I don't want you calling them. They find out I'm down here. Before I get a chance to tell them about it, I'll lose my job. You kind of got this thing a little mixed up, haven't you? What do you mean? You've been trying to sell us how innocent you are all morning. Yet every time we ask a question, you give us a smart answer. Now, if you haven't got anything to hide, why don't you come off it and tell us the truth for a change? I'm doing that. When? What company you work for? I'm not going to tell you. This rate book we found in your car. This the one? Great Southwestern Life, that it? Why don't you call them and find out? We did. They say they never heard of you. Then it isn't them, is it? What are you doing with the rate book? That illegal, too? Where'd you get it? A friend of mine. I like to check the prices of other companies, keep abreast of things. What's the friend's name? You know I'm not going to give you that. Hey, who put you on to me, anyway? Who said it yourself? We're not going to tell you. But it was that Wilder brought. Who? Who's playing cozy now? Wilda Chandler. She's the one who told you to pick me up, isn't she? Does she have a reason to do that? She might think so. Why don't you tell us about it? I tried to help her out, give her the chance to earn some extra money. Told her I'd give her five bucks for every prospect she turned over to me who bought some insurance. And it worked good for a while. Then she started boozing it up. Got to be a real lush. Couldn't trust her anymore. She was giving me a list of bad names, making them up. I had to get rid of her. No. Yeah. Give her a coat and called it quits. How about these names she gave you? You got a copy of them? No. Turned out they weren't any good, so I threw them away. Frank? Yeah, you got that list? Yeah, here you go. Listen to these. See if they sound like the people Wilda told you about. Pauline Bunnell, Myrtle Briggs, Mrs. Mildred Carlson, Miss Jane Anderson, Alice Beckworth. How about it? Do you recognize any of them? She's the one, isn't she? Lousy lush. She's the one who told you, isn't she? Recognize the names? Yeah. Every one of those people have had a burglary in their house in the last month. There's a lot more names. Why don't you cop out and tell us the truth? I got nothing to say until I see a lawyer. Joe, see you a minute. Yeah, Olson, right away. What do you got? Kid says his name's Jim Nelson. Picked him up out at Barrett's place. Anything on him? Suitcase. Here it is. A couple of fur coats inside of him. What about Nelson? Checked him. Got a record listing to burglary arrest. One conviction. Where's he now? Got him over in an interrogation room. Who's with him? Rubles. Any trouble? No. Walked in and we took him. Says he wants to see Barrett. Thought maybe you'd want to talk to him first. Yeah, I do. I'll be right back, Frank. Okay. Let's go. Anything on the coats? Haven't had a chance to check them yet. Brought the Nelson kid right in. Anybody out at Barrett's now? Yeah, we called the team before we left. Okay, thanks. I'll call you. Right. Hi, Rubles. Thanks. All right. Olsen, I'll be down the hall if you need anything, Joe. Right, thank you. Your name Nelson, is that right? Yeah. Where'd you get the suitcase? Barrett gave it to me. When? A couple of days ago. I was supposed to take it to Detroit. What happened? I didn't make it. Got to thinking about how he was willing to pay my expenses back there just to take the suitcase. Got to wondering what was so important. Opened the suitcase, and when I saw what was in it, I didn't want any part of it. Tried to give it back to him. The cops picked me up. Uh -huh. You know where he got the coats? No, and I don't want to. Anytime a guy's willing to pay expenses back east just to deliver a suitcase, there's something phony about it. I want no part of the action. You know I got a record. I only stood one conviction. I'm trying to keep clean. You got Barrett here now? That's right. You gonna hold him? Yeah. I'd like to see him for a minute. Why? I'd like to tell him what I thought about the deal he tried to pull. Telling me how he was my friend. All the time getting me to carry the stuff for him. Can you fix it up so I can see him? Yeah, come on. You gonna be able to nail him? We will now. Imagine a guy would pull a stunt like that on his friends. A guy would do that do about anything. Yeah. You willing to testify about how Barrett gave you the suitcase? I sure am. I want to see him nailed good. Barrett? Yeah? Turn around here. This friend of yours wants to see you. What are you doing here? Thought I'd be in Detroit by now, didn't you, Max? Just keep your mouth shut. They got nothing on us. Watch him while I get a suitcase, Frank. Yeah. How about it? You ever see this bag before, Barrett? 
He should. He gave it to me. Beautiful coat here. Let's take a look at the lining, shall we? I don't know anything about those. A guy sold them to me. I don't know where they came from. How about it? It's right there, initials J.A. You want to tell us now, Barrett? Barrett? Lousy kid, I should have known better than right, that. You. Come on, let him go. Let him go. Bust his nuts. Sit down, bother you. Sit down, Barrett. Oh, kid. Going good until he stuck his nose into it. All going good. How lousy can a deal get? Well, I wouldn't worry about it. What? You're going to find out. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On September 18th, trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Friends, going into the new year, there are a couple of things that we sincerely hope you'll do. One, continue to listen to Dragnet. We're going to do our best to make it the kind of a program that you want. And two, if you're not already smoking Chesterfields, try them. And, of course, all of us on Dragnet wish you a happy and prosperous new year. Max Rudolph Barrett was tried and convicted of burglary in the first degree, four counts, and received sentence as prescribed by law. Burglary in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. His associates in the burglary ring were tried and convicted of receiving stolen property, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not more than ten years. Because of the cooperation she gave authorities in apprehending the suspects, Wilda Noreen Chandler was released from custody. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the Dragnet Christmas story, it's available in RCA Victor Record Albums. <laughs> Just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Carolyn Jones, Vic Perrin, Lillian Baya. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely new Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Have you tried new cork tip Fatima? It's the smooth smoke with Fatima tips of perfect cork. King size for longer filtering and Fatima quality for a much better flavor and aroma. Remember, Fatima, with tips of perfect cork, is made and guaranteed by the makers of Chesterfield, Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company. John Cameron Swayze in the news next on the NBC Radio Network. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.